okay, I'm going to see how quickly I can do this. Now, I'm trying to follow up a video that I shot a couple of days ago on Thunderfoot's Why Do People Laugh at Creationist number 35. And in that video, Thunderfoot was juxtaposing Newton's contributions to science with Newton's contributions to religion or Christianity. And I had suggested that it was a sort of painful uh, omission of mathematics there and questionable why he didn't address math and was Newton's contributions to mathematics more similar to contributions in science or more similar to contributions uh, in religion. And I think we all know the history of sacred geometry and some of the ways that math does seem to have a kind of orderliness that uh, lends intelligibility to some forms of theism, at least people like Spinoza and stuff like this. I thought what I would do here, though, just to try to illustrate the differences between both math and science, and then try to get at the importance of maybe addressing uh, some of this conflation or this lack of address in, in Thunderfoot's video here. I'm turning here to a video that I just watched called 10 Questions for Neil deGrasse Tyson. And this was done by Time Magazine back in 2008. It now has over 162,000 views. In this interview, uh, deGrasse Tyson is asked if he could speak with any scientist uh, alive or dead, uh, who would it be and what would he talk about? He immediately says Newton and he says that Newton was brilliant, he was a genius, he says he read all of Newton's stuff, he has all of Newton's work, and he says that Newton's brilliance was partly related to his ability to formulate questions, that he was wonderful at raising questions and that the kinds of questions he raised drove subsequent thought very successfully. I mean, he, he was able to get at the basic nature of reality. Well, when he's illustrating this and he's further clarifying what a bad question is or what a, a question is that's ill-formed or a, a sign of a badly thought out question, he says, at what temperature does the number seven melt? And then he says, uh, what's the square root of a pork chop? Now, both of these are very funny questions, right? I mean, it's, it's a riot. And he's showing that if you conflate the difference between a mathematical reality or the eidetic realm with the empirical reality, that, that testable realm of material substance that science deals with, you're going to get in all kinds of confusion and you're not going to make some movement forward. So I think part of the issue here is that math is real and it's a product of the human mind, but the human mind is a symptom of the orderliness in the world itself. So the orderliness that we find within math isn't simply a product of the human mind and human imagination, if by that we mean it's in a vacuum and not itself already part of a larger order, right? So I mean, the, the mathematical order that we see in the world is a projection from math activity of humans, but that projection is part of a larger order, right? I mean, humans are part of this uh, larger set. I think that the question, though, that, that needs to be addressed, again, is math more similar to a kind of religiosity, or is it more similar to a kind of empirical science? 